Welcome back to States and Kingdoms. Today we're talking about the Beatles' White Album from 1968. In mono. In mono. Right. We were excited when we came across the Beatles in mono. No, actually we missed the Beatles in mono. That When that box set was released... Yeah, we weren't paying attention. I... Yeah, I don't know. I think I was in um, the Peace Corps and, you know, <laughs> yeah. and we were just very busy. Those were busy years. You know, someone has to do it, Jenna. <laughs> and uh, I don't know. I just missed that box set, and yeah, I still really it's regret a shame. that. Missed the Rolling Stones one as well, and of course we made up for that. Yeah. We now have a fruity pebbles version of the Rolling Stones <laughs> box set. It's so colorful. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. So we missed the box set, but then we've been able to piece together a couple of um, albums, a couple of pieces here and there. Yeah. So we got the White Album in mono. The White Album. Along with Hard Day's Line, it's my favorite Beatles album. Yeah, okay. I really have... You know, this is an album we actually didn't grow up listening to. I didn't hear the White Album until I was uh, something like a teenager, ba yeah, I was, basically. Yeah, I was a young teen. No, I, I agree. This album felt more like, uh, like my own thing. To me, the White Album was just sort of the, the, the perfect album for what I always kind of thought of the... The Beatles as. There you go. There's a sentence for you. <laughs> if Two King. with I know. Two with Dear. Beatles the Like I always just thought of the Beatles as as a band where like all music just came together in them in the sixties. I mean like, you know, kind of like the, the history of music. Yes, I mean you had them. I mean, you know, in a lot of ways Elvis really kind of brought, you know, American popular music all together in one very charismatic, you know, singer, musician, actor. And, um, you know, and then the Beatles kind of did that as well. I mean, everything just kind of, you know, they knew a lot of music. Yeah. They, you know, they they sort of partook in everything that was going on at the time. And they would sort of, I don't know if you say, you know, kind of dabble in all of it. You know, whether it was, you know, soul or folk rock or, you know, or just folk. Popular um, songs, you know, popular songs, standards. Yeah, I yeah. mean, it it was it was all. It, they were they were involved in all of it, and it was all kind of you know part of of them. Synthesized. That's what we used to say, like you know, like they were like the lingua franca of rock and roll. Like if someone knew the Beatles, then there's a good chance they knew other things, and you could you could ex you could say like I want this to sound like the Everly Brothers. And they would be able to understand that more, like Motown, more of the Miracles, or you know, and and you could get that yeah. too. And you know, it's all, it's just all kind of through them. And so this album, this has got everything. Yeah. And you know, and we talk about double albums. Sometimes double albums don't need to be double albums. I know George Martin didn't. Yeah. Really to be a want this to be single. a double album, but I'm very happy that it is. Yeah. I think you know, hearing them. You know, really at their at their peak, and you're hearing like everything they got. Yeah. You know, I, I love that. I and mean, I, 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 I think a minimal of filler for sure. I would. I, 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 mean, I, you know, because there, there's there's double like what you were saying. There's double albums where you're like, okay, that song definitely doesn't really need to be there. I feel the same way about Brian Wilson. I know, and some people disagree. They disagree about that as well. I I kind of when you have a great artist. At the peak of their powers, there is no. Fear. I really want to. I want to hear everything they've they have. I want to see every drawing they made. I yeah. want. I you know. I really oh, would yeah, like no, to. Me too. So much music on it. There's so many different things to, uh, you know, just absorb on it. Which is why this is a two parter, which ah. I did not say in the beginning. Right. Well, obviously, we're going to break it up into discs. Also, you yeah. know, we were talking about this earlier. You know, the fact that. They, you know, it's self-titled, you know, in a lot of ways, it feels like the Beatles kind of coming back together and getting back to like their roots, which I know is the idea with Get Back. But I mean, this, it actually feels for me, it happens here. It's like, this is the Beatles. It's just songs, mm -hmm. no bullshit, no costumes, no theming. Nice no, language, babe. No alter ego. Yes. No, you know, TV movie. Right. Um, a played rapper. Can I say anything else? You know, I mean, the Beatles album covers are, are kind of a fascinating topic. Yeah. Someone should do a video about that and then, and then not even watch it himself. States and Kingdoms did a video. The first disc, first 
album. That's all we're talking about. In part one, part two... Will be the next. Intermission. So this clearly begins with Back in the USSR. Right. Continues to another song. <laughs> and then another song. And keeps song. going. Right. As far as mono Beatles albums are concerned, uh, some of them are quite fairly drastically different. I mean, really uh, surprising because, you know, a lot of times it's, it's not that different. I You're don't like, usually, oh, you know, yeah, I don't, I don't expect it to be so different. But uh, some of them are. This isn't. I mean, it's there are certainly differences. There, you know, there's there is there's a, a few songs where the difference is is clear, and you're a like, kind of oh, pun- especially you know when you're used to hearing it one way for your yeah. whole life. There's a punchiness. There's a, a, a to to some of the songs that you know aren't there, and then at the same time, something like Helter Skelter is almost seem seemingly to me a little bit less. Yeah. Um, Bombastic, uh, uh, sort of, yeah, sort of effective in the, in that way. But it, it's really, it, it's almost just like different colors of the same thing. I, I, you know, I, I would, I kind of want to hear the one that I grew up listening to, which is the stereo version. You like what's familiar. It's you know, and that's all it is. Yeah. Really, I mean, you know, I, I don't it's know all, it's that preferences. It's not like one is better than the is, other. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know that one is better than the other. I, I, I think they, you know, it's a great album, no matter what. And you know they're all, they all sound amazing on it, no matter what. Ringo does sound like someone might be stepping on on his. Uh, um, yeah, and don't pass tiny me by. It's, a, it's yeah. That that was where I was like, oh wait a minute. Yeah, like that the does. Vocal. That's fairly is noticeable. Very different, and sounds like it was slightly sped up. But just as far as the album, I mean, you know, back in the USSR is a great opening. Yeah. It is, and the whole Beach Boys thing. You can think about it. You don't have to. It's yeah. su- it's such a it's such a great song. Yeah, I love um, my favorite version of Paul is his like rock and roll Elvisy version. You know, and and that's that's what he, he you know in the vocal that's mm-hmm. more or less like what he's doing here. I like it's, it when he's really singing. It does have an he does have kind of an Elvis quality to it. Yeah, to you know when he's that singing one. that with his full his full voice. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I, I think yeah. Making really a good. whistle on a new place. Yeah. Oh, very nice. Yeah. Very nice. Uh, i think also like i mean we'll probably say this in the next part too you know the song sequence works really well i think like on both albums yeah you know just like you know so back in the ussr going right into dear prudence it was just like a really nice well the perfect segue i mean they yeah yeah it just works so well and dear prudence is such a great song you know i mean and the the bass on it is always just so not overpowering. It's just omnipresent. Yes, you know, I, and I it's want to say you're right though. The the track order really is perfect, in my opinion. I mm-hmm. think I think it. I wouldn't change Works thing. perfectly. You know the the shifts in rhythm and style. I mean, you never really get. You know, I mean, I, I don't think you would, but you never get tired of anything. You never get bored. It is a long album. No. And sometimes, I'm, I, even me now, I'm like, wait a minute, what comes next? I, mm. I want it, you know, I kind of want it to go into something else, but it goes into this. It's like, it's a, there's an element of surprise, even after listening to it a billion times it, somehow. So, it, you know, we, some, sometimes we talk about track order. For some albums that, you know, could have been maybe even better, better yeah. you know, the track order can, can mess with them sometimes. This is this is really fantastically done. Mm-hmm. So Dear Prudence is an amazing follow-up. Yeah. And they don't do, it's not like John, Paul, John, Paul. The you second. Know, like, <laughs> second. Second. Um, you know, it's 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 more nuanced than that. Right. Which I, It's you know. John, Paul, Paul, John, John, Paul, John, Paul, George. George. <laughs> Ringo, no. I mean, John has thirteen songs on the White Album, and he he basically wrote a, a masterpiece of an album just on his own. Yeah. Thirty. I mean, you know what? Fourteen songs as a as a Beatle album. And yeah, and they're all wonderful. I mean, it's this is this is John in full force, and it's that's what's so much fun uh, for me. Even as a kid, you know, John was John had a. a an appeal, a mystique, you know, he was cool, he was smart, he was funny, yeah. you know, I loved his songs, I mean, I, obviously, I, you know, <laughs> a big John Lennon fan. You're a fan. Yeah, so it's, this is, I get it. this is a lot of fun to listen to, because he, he wrote just 13 incredible, stylistic, introspective, honest, raw, clever, you know, funny, 
Yeah. It's all there. I mean, he's all, he's, he's really all there. And, you know, and I know, I think he felt that he hadn't been present as much on the previous, couple you know, couple albums. Yeah. And I think you could say that, you can see that, although he still wrote great songs. But, yeah, here he's really, like, it's, it feels like he's back. Yeah. I think Glass Onion's a great song. I think it's interesting that they chose to put strings on it. I mean, it's a pretty short song. It's just a little over two minutes, and this is kind of a it's it's one of the sort of denser songs. It, I mean, I like them. It works really well. It works yeah. really well on on to me on either. I, I like the sound. I I mean, I wouldn't even. I think the strings you know. are beautiful. I think they're arranged really well, and it 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 works. Obviously, it works. Yeah. It's just um, you know, they're not they're not on every song. You don't have like them added to. Right. To everything. So then, you know, after that, obla di obla da, which does shift, again, it shifts the, the rhythm. They have like a sing-along. Right. But that's, that, that's your bag, baby. It's, you know, it's very catchy. Yeah. And then Wild Honey Pie after is, is you know, so the first of like almost, could almost be considered. Interlude. Like, yeah, musical interludes. Which I like. Yeah, I, because it works. It 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 works on an album like this. I I like I do I like it. I, I like, like it. the. I always like that. You know the kind of like wall of music. It's like a mosaic, and you you know you just keep getting this different flavor, this different sound, and mm. you know, different rhythm, and you know. So I, yeah, like you get that with Wild Honey Pie. I'm just skipping over. I mean, you know, Bungalow Bill. The continuous story of Bungalow Bill. So it's a really fun song. It's kind of like John's uh, "Hooray for Captain Spaulding." I mean, it's it, you know, it's it's again sing along. I mean, it is. you know, they they yeah, they could do those really well. Yeah. Um, and then George shows up to the party. You know, while my guitar gently weeps, I always love the song. It's a gorgeous. Uh, song. It is. It's, it is really. I think almost. I think George is actually still uh, strangely enough um, underrated by maybe by some Beatles fans. Underrated. I, I mean his. He always was really talented. He always, you know, I mean, once he started, he's really, really young. I mean, you know, uh, once 12, he started, he was 12 when, years when old. When they came to America. No, when, when he started really writing, it didn't take long for him to start writing really great songs. And, you know, he came out with some just, some awesome songs. I mean, he always had a little bit of an attitude. I always loved George's attitude, you know. He's feisty. He's a little feisty. Yeah, and, he's uh, a little grumpy. You know, he really added something different and 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 necessary and uh this is so beautiful and i absolutely love eric clapton's playing um his vibrato is is just the most beautiful vocal vibrato i you know i just yeah amazing. yeah he's he, at this time geez eric, eric clapton was, was something else yeah it's yeah the song is just perfect the first side ends with happiness is a warm gun which is just uh yeah uh, it was a very special song. One of those songs that, in a, a very compact amount of time, it, it just does a lot. You know, it goes through these different parts and just like such a dynamic song in a very short length, which mm -hmm. I can't imagine is an easy thing to compose. And Just under, John understanding rock and roll and being able to write some just incredible rock and roll. You know, sophisticated, clever you know, and just putting it all together. And this, what happened in this one run is it's a, just an awesome kind of, you know, 50s-ish rock and roll song. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, you know, but... Yeah, and I, lo and I love John's solo on yeah. on that song. No, it's... Because it's, it's so just like grungy and growly. So then Martha, my dear, again, you know, Paul... I really it like shifts. this song. It is very good, and actually, on in mono, I, I it's got a little bit more of a, a punch to it. Yeah, I keep saying I, punch, but you know what no, I mean. No, but it's, it's true. When we were listening to it on on the mono record, yeah. I was more aware of the tempo shifts yes. and the tempo picking up. And um, you know, I've always thought of it as sort of a simple song, but now contrasting it with Blackbird or even I Will, this song just is like closer to Lady Madonna for me now. It's got like a, you know, a, yeah. a kind of like real to it, yes. for lack of a better word. Yeah, I think it, it loses some of the, the piano balladness of it in, in mono. It's like got it, the you, horns, it, you know, I mean, it it, does there's, kinda, more, there's more going on. It comes at you a little bit more. I've always loved it, but yeah. I, I really enjoyed it listening to it again. You know, we were saying, as far as the mono, Don't Pass Me By is probably the most noticeably different. Yes. Um, because of it, you know, being uh, faster. 
like sped up. So it doesn't sound like 100% um, like yeah. the Ringo you know and love? You know, I, I can't say this for sure. I mean, I, we didn't listen to this back to back or anything. You know, I mean, I just, and the one that we listen yeah, the to, version, the version, yeah, 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 the one that we listen to, you know, as kids, teenagers, and adults, well, is the, the CD. CD version yeah, so I mean, that's also means you know, it's also fairly different. On John's song, so like on "I'm So Tired," the next song, his voice sounds uh, even greater to me than it had. Yeah. For all these years. I was listening very closely to the vocals and a lot of them, except for the Ringo one, they have a little, there, there's there's more nuance than I, I recalled hearing before. You know, I, I hear like a little bit of a different like vibrato thing or yeah. like a, it like trails off in a way that I didn't, you know, quite remember on the but CD. It's particularly John though. Uh, on, on his songs, I just keep listening to this. I just, it's like, wow, he sounds great. Yeah. You know, he just sounds so great on, on I'm So Tired. He's, it's really such a strong, incredible yeah, strong vocal, vocal performance. Yeah. I always love the song. Again, the the ships, you know, just are, are so right. so organic along with the, the emotions of the singer. I mean, it's, it's kind of what you'd expect from someone like John Lennon. But I mean, it you know, it's fun. It's awesome. Blackbird, of course, is a, is, is a beautiful song. Uh, you know, it's, again, you know, Paul doing... Like folk things, um, classically inspired folk things. With a tweeting bird. Uh, and then why don't we, you know, do it in the road, doing his his sometimes somewhat Elvis type thing. And that one almost does sound more like Tom Jones. Mm-hmm. But I don't want to really say that. Not that it's anything against Tom Jones. No. Uh, I love Tom Jones. I always thought, why don't we do it in the road was a little, um, like... This, and this is maybe the impressions of a young, a young Jenna. Uh, you know, I always thought that it was like out of character for him. I was like, what are you trying to do, Paul? Are you trying to be bad? That's what I thought. Yeah. But it's fun. I, I like it. Piggies is a song that I could imagine some people don't really like. But I, again, it's, it's a song that fits on an album like this. I mean, this, this just... It's super catchy. It is. It is. And the harpsichord. And it's it, funny. It's, again, it's a different... It's a different kind of a song. Yeah, and it's funny. It's a lot of food songs on, on this album from George. <laughs> well, you say about piggies, not pork so much. Although, I mean, it does. it's in there, but it's not like yeah, a song just about bacon. I know. I always love Paul's, um, you know, backwoods Americana mm-hmm. accent on the beginning of Rocky Raccoon. <laughs> Again, these are all almost more entertaining on the anthology. Just a little bit. I, I yeah. still think about that. Well, because we this. did. We, we listened to the anthology so much that... I can shift into that version very easily, you know, like the mistake he makes is very funny. You know, and then I Will and Julia are, you know, both very pretty ballads. Julia is, is certainly... It's a song that gets better for me almost every time I listen to it because I I almost get down to like a new layer. Every time I hear it, I, I just, well, I it, it brings me to like another place. Mom, mom liked that song. So we're going to talk more about this in part two. Right. Um, we really have to get going. Yeah. <laughs> so. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment, do all those things, and stay tuned for part two. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.